You're watching Hurley Films. What's up, everybody? I know it's been a little longer than usual. It's been almost 10 days since we last posted a video, and I usually try to get one out uh, twice a week. Well, I'll talk about that here in a minute, but. Oh, I'm about to start working on this. You got it! Oh, there's a wall. Wait, you're about to start getting... So the pool is, uh, the pool is a hit. But it is such a hit that you can see the bottom down there. <laughs> Why is it like that? I'll tell you why it's like that. Because, because, because you poop in the pool, nasty. <laughs> we got a floater. <clears throat> As you can see, our ground all around is made of mud. So I've planted some grass, some Bermuda grass around here, but it's just not it's not taken off super well and even with fertilizer and everything else it's just not it's just not going great so we're mud people as i've said before but you can see the pool is filthy just from these kiddos swimming in it um but i've done a lot of research on how to do this because it's not an easy thing getting a pool vacuum to work with this kind of above ground pool, it's apparently not, it's a thing, it's quite a thing. So we've been able to maintain all the levels of the pool, the pH, the chlorine, the salt, everything else has been maintained really well. So the last thing is just to get the uh, vacuum to work because it's disgusting. We have, this weekend, our 4th of July party. Um, so I'm gonna get this video done either today or tomorrow and put out to you guys. Um, but uh, it's so, I'm frustrated. Um, I've shot, I've lost like three videos. I'm kind of bummed about it. So I'm, a lot of you guys know, if you haven't known before, if you haven't, I guess if you haven't already, subscribe, like, uh, comment down below, let's have, know how you're doing. but. Subscribe to the channel um, if you haven't already. So if those of you who don't know, I do video for a living. I'm a video producer. I, I'm a co-owner in a media company where we make videos for all kinds of clients in the outdoor industry, as well as municipalities and other stuff. So that's what my day job is. No, I don't make money from YouTube. Well, I make money from YouTube, but it's like $100 every two or three months. <laughs> we just don't have a huge subscriber base uh, yet but we're working on it, we're getting there. But I had three videos shot. Um, and of course, we I go on a shoot to a, uh, to a client and I uh, plugged in my card and I just formatted it and went on about my way. We shot all this stuff, had a great shoot. Well, those three videos, I don't know how or why, but that card got put in there and I just didn't have it. It's stupid. So I lost it. I had some really cool stuff. Um, we've been trying to do a couple other things that maybe I'll get to in this video today. Maybe not. Maybe tomorrow. But one of the things is Hurley and I spent half of a Saturday laying out our fence uh, for our property. And I'm going to take you through it now because I just got to catch you guys up on what we've missed now. Uh, so right here, we're at our first T post and you can see it goes straight that way. We got just a piece of string that we were using to kind of run things on. Um, but this is going to be our front paddock and there will be another string of T posts that go down and then run into the side of the building, uh, to the shop building over there or the barn and we'll have our front paddock. So it'll be really cool. Um, this is where we are wanting to get, uh, are trying to decide right now between hair sheep and goats, uh, trying to decide 
which one we want to go with um, and I'll show you why here in just another second but we also have a disc golf basket oh on camera too we got a get diff disc golf basket um, that's set up here that Brad uh, he was about to throw away and he said uh, we decided to throw it into the back of my pickup <laughs> so we have this uh, disc golf basket that no one has aced yet uh, no one has made the hole in one from the front of the house um, it's driving Austin nuts Uncle Austin's been trying to get hole in one for a while but this area right now that we're sitting in will be a front paddock that will house animals um, and also just be an area where we can do stuff with things that need to be fenced off. All right, so that fell off. It's been raining an insane amount the past couple days. It's been, we have had, in the past four days, we've had seven inches of rain. It's been crazy. Lots of flooding, uh, lots of really crazy flooding has been happening. Um, but right here, we're at the corner of the shop. This is where our next area of the fence will be. It will shoot off this direction because this front paddock that we just were in, so like you can see the disc golf basket over there and the front corner of the fence. This paddock up here is about an acre. Um, and then we're gonna have another paddock that is right here that's small. So through all of this area, and that's where we'll have uh, chickens, ducks, other small animals uh, that need to be close. We'll also put water out here, some other things like that. And this fence will shoot from this corner here straight that way. And I'll show you where we'll link back up in here there, up there. But we've been doing a lot of work trying to clear this area out with the brush hog and the mower and hands <laughs> there's a lot of dead fall back in here and i've gotten to the point where i'm just clearing out small sections that way i can have areas to put like our chicken coop that my dad bought us a long time ago uh, and some other things so we can begin to do animals and stuff like that and then the rest of it i'm either going to let the sheep or the goats take a crack at and see if they can knock it down a little bit more first before we really get into it. I have, I've talked with, with Daniel Arms, Barnes Family, Family Homestead, great YouTube channel, he's a good friend. Uh, they have goats and he's told me that yes, they'll eat all this stuff that's leafy, they'll eat it. Uh, they'll eat quite a bit of it, but they're not gonna like eat it down to the ground, like all the wooded parts, like they're not going to just decimate it they'll eat a lot of it but it's not like what you would hope they're not lawnmowers and then i have a friend who's had hair sheep and then i've also watched keeping it dutch or he talks about loving hair sheep and they he said that they will eat all this stuff too pretty much kind of just like a goat so we're going to have this other area sectioned off we've arrived at our next t post where we're going to begin another section that's about another acre and it runs way back there all the way back to our end of our property line and over straight across all the way to the property line in between me and uncle austin so i really think i could go crazy like i could spend a ton of time a ton of resources a ton of energy to make this like I would want it to look, which is just, you know, where you can just see through the trees pretty well. There's not a lot of underbrush and junk, but I really do think that animals could do a lot of the work for us. So we're gonna hope for that. So right now where we're walking is the dividing line between the last acres so there's the front acre there's this acre 
And then there's this back here, which is actually more like two and a half acres. Um, so we've got three different paddocks that we could also turn into a fourth if we really wanted to. Um, if we wanted to take the time to run one more. We are doing electric, we're doing poly wire, and I'm gonna continue to use the same system I've got. And then we've arrived back at the kids who are screaming and yelling. I'm trying to talk to you guys, but I'm also have like one, I'm doing that thing that a parent does when you are talking, but you also have one ear open that's listening. And so you can do neither, neither effectively. That's what's happening right now because they're screaming and yelling, but it's happy screaming and yelling. It's playing and not killing each other. So it's the same kind of fence. Got poly wire. We've got lock jaws, T-posts, and something that I ordered that I'm excited to show you guys that I have never used before. They're called, uh, it's by lock jaws, it's the same thing. They have T-post corners. And so it uses T-posts to create a corner because this wire is not, you know, it's not super, the tension is not super crazy. Um, so they can, the T-post can handle it. And with these T-post corners, it actually makes it really, really, really sturdy. See if I can get through here without being shocked. <sighs> so that's the fence update. We'll have more of that fun to come. And like I said, Hurley helped me put in those T posts and it was hot, wasn't it? Oh yeah, very hot. Very so what was hot. your favorite thing about the T posts Can putting you see in? The shark? Let me see it. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> that's freaky. But uh, like I said, can I try the four wheeler around? Yeah, Hurley rode the four wheeler around and he was the T post man. Yeah. So, what we're gonna go do now is we're gonna go get the parts. Um, and you can get in and build the vacuum. We're gonna get the parts that we need to be able to try to build this vacuum. Um, I've got them from Lowe's. It is a system of kind of, it's a rigged deal. Um, so if it works, I'll put the parts down in the description of what we have. Um, I have some cyanic acid or however you say it, it's a stabilizer. That's uh, dissolving in this bucket so I can pour it in later. And the main thing is we need, we need to get this thing vacuumed out because we got a party this weekend. So I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna go get the parts and let's see if we can make this happen. Okay, I need to move. We got fireworks and fireworks. Here is our vacuum. This is just a piece of plastic, not complicated. This piece hooks onto that pole that we had outside This and the pole and then there's a hose that hooks to this that sucks this. This has got bristles so it can agitate the bottom and suck the dirt and gunk and filth off the bottom. So that's part one that we need. Now the hard part about all this. This is a, like an outlet piece right here. So this is to replace the uh, inch and a quarter hose that comes off with the full inch and a half. This thread is what we've been trying to match because most PVC has MTP threads, which that means they get smaller as you screw it in that makes the connection tighter, more water sealed, yada, yada, yada. Otherwise known as it doesn't match. So it's kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain. So what we have to do, and I don't have the hose. Let me go get the hose real quick. This is inch and a half hose. This is what's used and it's got these uh, threaded ends on it. And this is what's used to actually hook up the pool to the valves and to the, all of the things. What I have here is an MTP thread and then the thread that's just normal thread for this hose. And I can screw it on and it's on there. But as you can see, we have a gap. That is bad. <laughs> that is not sealed. That will leak everywhere. So, what we've done. I've also bought two of these 
flex fittings for inch and a half pipe. It's a coupler. So I don't need this, but this is what I do need. Normally I would say buy an O-ring assortment, but they didn't have any. There are no O-rings anywhere at the home store right now. So what happens is this fits perfectly in there, will seal against the bottom, will allow me to screw this in and make a really, really tight seal that's completely waterproof and ready to go. So that's the first thing. That will help us be able to hook up our water feature that will help cool the pool off, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So this, super simple. Hooks to the top of that guy, just like that. Going in, going in is the part that's hard because um, we have to pull water from the pool through the system to actually filter it, clean it, because we have a sand pump filter and then when we're done, we'll backwash it. We have, first thing is this step down adapter. That will allow us to hook our big hose to this hose. So we will be able to do the vacuuming process. Now this, in turn, now it has to get up to this. That's the problem. So we have, first step is to go up to two inch and then a piece of one and a half inch pipe connects these two. So now we're able to go into the filter pump to be able to vacuum. All of that, all of that for that. Ugh. So let's work on this. Let's get this rigged up and see if this will work to vacuum the pool. So using the scientific method, really critical. First, you need a uh, sharp scalpel of some sort. So we're gonna tear to get ourselves a sweet, clean cutting surface. We're gonna put that in there, say okay. So we know that that is the full length. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start with half of that. So about right here. And we're just gonna cut this through, maybe. So there it is. Not the prettiest in the world. But we need it to do one job. And that one job is create a seal between the base of this piece of pipe and the threads. Oh man. And that already, that took out all the play. So in theory it works. Um, let's go test it out. Here we are back at the filter. We're going, I'm just gonna use this hose as kind of like, that way I don't have to unscrew and screw in Yay! this thing all the time. Yeah. Yay! Merlin's here! Merlin's friend Wait, is here. Come over here in the pool! Merlin! You, you have to run around to the front. He's in the front. Come on, don't get out, let's go! Wait, I have all my underwear on. Well, you better probably go put your swimsuit on instead of your underwear. So the key to this, is that you have to get all of this hose in here and you have to get water in the hose. Because if you don't get water in the hose, then it creates bubbles, which takes away the vacuum, which makes you not vacuum. You turn your filter on and then we'll take our vacuum hose to get it full of water. We put it on the outlet and you can see those bubbles way out there. 
that's all of the air getting out of the hose right now, which is what we want. So we turn the filter off. We're gonna turn this valve off. So now water can't come this way. And we're also going to turn this filter off, or this, not filter, but this plunger off. So now water can't come out. So now, theoretically, we can connect this without too much pain and suffering. We'll have a lot of water come out, but that's okay, because we will put it back in in just a second. This is why I can see the valve thing coming in the near future. Because if we have a valve there, then there will be no issue. There will be zero issue with being able to get water all the way in there without causing any air pockets. Because then it's just a flip of a switch. So if this works, we're definitely gonna go that way. So let me set this up so I can get this done without too much drama. Hey Hurley, what? hand me that hose please. The end of that hose right there. So we definitely have some air in the system right now. We're letting it kind of purge itself. Thank you. So getting water into the hose and all this stuff is the part that we're running into problems with right now. So we're gonna see if we can figure this out. So the good news right now is that I've got just the outlet from the pool running into this connection we've built and it's working great. We've got no bubbles moving in. That means we've got an airtight seal here and there's no water leaks. The issue we're running into is getting this attached to the hose with no leakage. So we're gonna have to figure that part out. Yes, I'm wet. Uh, so, did have to get in the pool. The vacuum works. I've got to do this quick because as you can see, the rain is coming back. But the vacuum works. The attachment works. Our little creation there works. However, as you can see by the quality of the ground, it, it got wet. It got very wet. So what we're going to do is coming from here out of or into the sand pump, pump filter, we are going to come up into a T right here where this will hook into the bottom of the T will come out where our vacuum attachment part will come out the side, then this will continue and come up to this outlet so we can turn this uh, inlet on and off down here on the T so we can cause this to be able to do a vacuum so we can either control the water coming in from the normal B valves or it can also come in from the vacuum pump side. The vacuum works well, but when it gets to be very dirty like it was, it was very, very dirty. As you can see now, we got a lot of it vacuumed up. At least the water's back to kind of a blue color. Um, it's still a little foggy, but the fogginess will go away with time. You got to put some extra uh, stuff in it, so it's good to go. But what we're gonna do next, on the next video, or the next pool video anyway. I don't know if it'll be the next video, but the next time we talk about the pool, we are gonna come out of, this is a the salt, salt water chlorine filter. This is a chlorinator. So this 
changes the salt, the chlorine atom in the, so the salt, it changes it to actual chlorine to, fill, to clean the pool. It's not running right now. Um, I just put salt in the pool um, to kind of increase our salt level. So until that dissolves, this thing just keeps spitting out a high salt warning. Um, but what we're gonna do is out of this, we're gonna put another T in right here the T will come off to where we can turn this water off up here that goes in the inlet to the pool. And then we can come up this way and we'll have like a little fountain water feature that goes off into the pool. That's for another day. Cause I'm wet and tonight I get to go on a date with the hottest girl in the world. Addy? Not Addy. <laughs> Addy's right here, she's doing good. Say hi, Addie. Hi. Hey, hey. Addie Faye. Hey, big girl, where's my smile? Huh, blue eyes? <laughs> this is my hot date tonight. What are we doing on our date, you may ask? We're going to look at furniture. Woo! Stay tuned for 4th of July because I'm, I'm not sure if we'll be able to pull it off. I want to live stream it but I don't know if our internet's good enough to actually pull off the live stream. Either way, we're gonna make a valiant attempt. Uh, I'm gonna set my phone up and we'll do a live stream. I'm also going to record it so we'll actually have a real video uh, of the entire thing, like the entire hour and 15 minute long deal. Austin, Uncle Austin has got some crazy new, <laughs> crazy new technology stuff. Uh, technology stuff. It's a timer that's controlled by Bluetooth that he can do on his app and he's got the whole thing rigged up to a song. Uh, it's going to be epic and we're going to video it all so you guys can partake of it. So I will see you guys here in a few days on the live stream for 4th of July or I'll see you on the next video or if you're just stopping by comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Addy says See you on the next video! <laughs>